Are there any announcements today? Senator Thielen. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise on a point of personal privilege. Please proceed. Colleagues, I just wanted to take a couple minutes today to talk about the importance of our state beaches. Um, unlike any other state in the nation that's along the coastline, Hawaii has a long tradition where our beaches are public lands and access to them is guaranteed. This uh, tradition and culture in Hawaii was handed down directly from the native Hawaiians who lived here before us. And it was embraced in our state laws when Chief Justice Richardson was dealing with a complaint where the Waikiki hotels were basically walling off Waikiki Beach. And he said, if these beaches are public lands, that includes access to those public lands. And issued an order that the hotels had to provide public access through their lobbies to the beaches. When I was chair of DLNR, the number one complaint that I received was complaints from residents saying that commercial businesses were taking over recreational places. We had a problem with the uh, beach weddings, presetting chairs, altars, tents, taking over areas, asking people to move. And so we went around the state with some new rules and requirements that if you were going to have a permit to do a wedding on the beach that you couldn't have stuff. And we were sued by a number of wedding operators who claimed that it was their First Amendment right, freedom of religion for people to be able to lay out the wedding the way they wanted to on the beach. And they took the matter to federal court because they knew that the state court was going to uphold our state customs and traditions. And in one of his last decisions, Judge King, Sam King, came out with this beautiful decision that said the state has a compelling interest to keep our beaches open to the public. When we talk about trying to do enforcement to maintain the state tradition and custom and law, I'd ask you to remember that we have about 140 doe care officers across the entire state, yet we have hundreds of thousands of acres of beaches and adjacent state wilderness areas, Lipoa Point, Turtle Bay, Kaibi, and hopefully in the future, Kapua. In the 21st century, our latest threat to our public beaches and recreational spaces is overnight accommodations through programs like Airbnb. In the 21st century, this is all I need to set up an Airbnb host account where I can take pictures and videos of a beach, type in what I'm going to be offering, give my contact information, phone number, email, and start renting overnight accommodations on beaches. So what does this have to do with House Bill 1850? According to communications we've all received from Airbnb, that's just a tax collection, collection measure. Airbnb is promoting House Bill 1850 because it favors their business model. It gives them a competitive advantage. The amendments that this body passed in Senate Draft 3 would ask Airbnb to assure that their business model doesn't violate and honors our state laws, customs, and traditions when it comes to our public beaches and our public lands. Airbnb sent us a response. April 21st, a letter that we received by email. Airbnb is an open platform, meaning we do not pre-screen or control the listings posted by hosts. If you go online, the Wall Street Journal has a recent article. Airbnb put out a uh, uh, venture capital raising effort in November. And the company, which is privately held, is estimated to have a current valuation of $25 billion. $25 billion with a B. Their estimated revenues for 2015 alone is $900 million. And I want to compare that to Outrigger Hotels and Resorts, our local company that respects our local values. You know what their mission statement is? Working as a family in harmony with the culture and environment of the places where we do business. Isn't that beautiful? It's a corporate responsibility 
to work as a family in harmony with the culture and environment of the places where we do business. Outrigger, in order to do business in Hawaii, employs local people, gives them careers, scholarships. They're a good member of the community. And oh, by the way, they manage a number of the timeshares that they own in their resort communities for, uh, for people who have bought into them. And when they rent them out on behalf of those people, they remit the TAT and GET. They're good members of the community. Airbnb, in contrast, I guess believes being an open platform means that they have a free pass from any type of corporate responsibility. They're telling us that they're not going to pre-screen to make sure that people don't post as hosts of public lands for camping. But apparently, they will ask us to trust them that they will remove these postings in the future after this legislation is passed. Well, if they're going to dedicate people to removing the postings, I'm not quite sure why they cannot put in an algorithm in their computer program so that when people use terms like camping and sleeping bags and things like that, it posts a red flag and that they can t shut those down and not allow them to be posted in the first place. I'm not sure why they're not taking some responsibility for their $25 billion valuation business model and use some of the $900 million annual revenues to make sure that they respect our customs and traditions and laws. I don't trust them. And I also don't trust the traveling entrepreneurs who may come through Hawaii and say, hey, this is cool. I'm going to set up as a host. And how are we going to enforce that? We have to find their guests. We have to get them to testify in court at a trial that's going to be held a month later that they've, beyond a reasonable doubt, violated the laws. We need to get into the 21st century ourselves. If Airbnb is asking us to pass a law that favors their business model, it's going to allow them to grow from a $25 billion company to a $30 billion, $40 billion, $50 billion company, and from $90 million in annual revenues to $1 billion and more on the grounds that they're renting places out here in Hawaii through their hosts, then we need to have provisions in this bill that ensure that their business model respects, honors, and enforces our state customs and traditions and laws regarding our public lands. SD3 has amendments in it that will assure that. There are other amendments that can be put in to assure that. And I'm asking that the conference committee members respect the will of the majority of the Senate and to protect our recreational lands from being commercialized. Thank you.